Hello and welcome to the next Crack a Pack episode. Today we are opening up a pack of Onslaught, not something that we get to open very often, so I'm really excited about this one. Obviously the fetch lands are going to be the biggest pull here, uh, so hopefully we get something interesting. I think we've only opened one of these before and we actually got Arcanus here on the pack, so kind of interesting there, but uh, of course we're going to look at this from a pack one, pick one perspective. We'll do the best we can to figure out what our first round draft pick would actually be, if I can get the pack open. Uh, and I will say I did not play during this time, so I do not know what the best cards are. Uh, so I'll do the best I can, but I can't promise that I will pick the right thing. Feel free in the comment section to roast me, disagree with me, or agree with me, whatever you feel like doing. So we will go through every card in our first common here is Charging Slate Back. Uh, it's a 4-3 for 4 and a red, and it cannot block. You can also morph it for 4 in a red, so you can play it face down as a 2-2 two, two creature for 3 of any color, and then you can turn it face up at any time for its morph cost, so you have to pay that 5 mana uh, 4 in a red. Uh, this is a pretty aggressive card, it's definitely kind of high on the, the CMC scale for a 4-3, uh, especially one that can't block. I do like the fact that you can play this early as a 3 cast just 2-2 two, two creature uh, if need be, so if you are in a red deck and you have this as a top end, it's probably not the most exciting thing. But it's probably not the worst thing either. It can kind of fill that mid-range role of a 3-drop or a 5-drop. Uh, and so it's it's really not a bad card. I'm not super excited about it, I will say, but it probably isn't terrible. Uh, Choking Tethers, a instant for 3 and a blue. Tap up to 4 target creatures. You could also cycle this for 1 and a blue, so you can discard this from your hand and instead draw a card. Uh, when you cycle it, you still get to tap target creature. Uh, and you can cycle at instant speed, so it is sort of a uh, tempo uh, uh, play for sure, and I do like this card. I think this is a really good interaction piece for just a blue uh, kind of flyers deck or any sort of tempo based deck. Uh, this card is definitely one of my favorites for that. Uh, I like this more than the Slateback to be honest, which is a little bit weird. The Slateback is much more of a, a board presence, things like that, which I normally look for uh, in draft, but I really like Choking Tethers. I think it's a pretty good card. So, uh, Taunting Elf is a 0-1 for 1 green, and all creatures able to block Taunting Elf do so. Uh, this card's an interesting one. I am not a fan of it in draft, uh, but it does sort of allow you, if you were to end up playing it, uh, to punch through on a particular turn for a good bit of damage. So the idea being that you attack with all of your creatures, including the Taunting Elf, and that every creature on your opponent's side of the field has to block the Taunting Elf which allows you to do one of two things. One, you can buff up the elf and actually get rid of some creatures, which is a good way to do it as well. Or you can uh, basically make sure that all the other creatures are going to be able to deal either a good chunk of damage or lethal damage and swing this in for kind of a winning blow. I don't like this card because it is a bit of a win more card. Uh, that's why I'm not a huge fan of it. So it would not be a pick for me. Uh, Haunted Cat... Cadaver, I hope I'm saying that correctly. It's a 2-2 for 3 and a black. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it. If you do, that player discards 3 cards from his or her hand. There's a lot of cards, and you can morph it again for 1 and a black. You can flip it face up. Uh, I actually really like this card. I don't know if this is good, but I feel like this is pretty powerful. Obviously, it's a little underwhelming as a 2-2, uh, especially for 4 mana, but you can morph this if you need to. Uh, so I, I'm kind of a fan of this. Again, I'm not sure if this is good, but I do kind of like it. So I'm going to say, so far, that might be my pick. Uh, Renewed Faith is an instant for two and a white. You gain six life, and then you can cycle it for one and a white. And when you cycle it, you gain two life. Uh, I'm not a fan of this card, especially in draft. It's a life gain card, and in general, I'm not a fan of it. What I will say is because it has cycling, if you are short on playables, this is basically draw one for two mana in a white deck. Uh, so cycling, if you haven't played in recent years, we did have cycling kind of come back recently. Uh, and what's so fantastic about it is even if you don't have a good target for the card, uh, if it's say destroy target artifact or enchantment and then it has a cycling cost, if you don't have an artifact or an enchantment that you actually want to destroy, you can just cycle it and it's perfectly fine. Uh, so a card like this actually does fit that slot, even if it's not necessarily the best card to have in your deck. Uh, it does fit in basically any white deck. So I do like the fact that this has cycling if I ended up with it. It's not a card I'm above playing by any means or anything like that, but it's just not ideal. It's not amazing by any means. So it's okay, not great. Uh, Wave of Indifference. X and a red for a sorcery and X target creatures can't block this turn. Uh, pretty straightforward card, definitely something in a hyper-aggressive kind of red deck that 
I'd probably be interested in one of these, maybe two, probably not, but maybe one. Uh, being able to, to just swing through some a, a good chunk of damage to hopefully finish off the game is really, really important. Wave of Indifference really helps you do that. I'd much rather have the creature base and the deck uh, infrastructure to make this work before having this, though, so I would not first pick it. Uh, Wirewood Pride is one green for an instant. Target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of elves in play. Elves are a big part of this set, I do remember that. Uh, but I'm not a huge fan of this. You really have to draft a lot of elves to make this worth it, I feel like. That being said, it is one green. It's not an expensive card, so if you do run five, six, maybe up to ten elves in a deck, which would be fantastic, uh, then having this in there probably isn't a bad idea. It's probably going to pump up for a few damage, which is not bad at all. So, And it's, uh, again, really cheap. Uh, Siphon Mind, three and a black for a sorcery. Each other player discards a card from his or her hand. You draw a card for each card discarded this way. I actually really like this. I don't know if it's the best thing in draft, uh, but I really like it. Uh, one, it gets rid of opponent's resources, which I do think is important, and two, it draws you uh, a card, which is really, really nice, especially in a multiplayer format, this would be fantastic. So I do like this card. Again, I'm not sure that it's amazing because they're probably just going to be able to discard something uh, not super exciting, but uh, it is still a powerful card. So one that I would consider playing, but probably not first pick in my opinion. Uh, Demystify, we actually had this card recently, I believe in 8th edition, so it's an instant for one white, pretty straightforward card, destroy target enchantment. This is much more of a sideboard card, if anything, I'm not a huge fan of this. Uh, it's efficient, for sure, and if there is an enchantment, you will want this card, but in general, not a fan. Uh, SWAT, 1 and 2 black for an instant, destroy target creature with power 2 or less, and then you can cycle this for 2. Uh, this is much more of a card that I'd be interested in. It's a bit of a safe pick over anything else that we've already gotten uh, because it is just a removal spell and it has cycling, so it has the that sort of safety net of if nothing else you can't al always cycle this. Uh, but I do like this card quite a lot, so I think for now that would be my pick. Uh, Dive Bomber, 3 and a white for a 2-2 two -two with flying. Uh, you can tap it, sacrifice it, and it deals 2 damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Okay, to be honest, I feel like this is probably going to be the, the better pick. Uh, it's a 2-2 two -two flyer, which is okay for 4 mana. It's not amazing, but it's fine. Uh, but it can also kind of deal with some low-end creatures uh, with that second ability. So I do like this card. I think this is definitely the pick so far, uh, but I might be wrong on that. Again, I'm not sure. Um, uh, Complicate is 2 and a blue for an instant. Counter target spell, unless its controller pays 3. You can cycle it for 2 and a blue, and when you cycle it, you may counter target spell, unless its controller pays 1. Uh, this is a really interesting card. It's a lot of text to basically say counter target spell, uh, but I, I'm not a fan of it, to be honest. It's a little expensive. It's not hard countering by any means, and at 3 mana, I'd really appreciate much more of a hard counter. Uh, that being said, you'll probably get something with this, and you do have the opportunity to cycle it, so uh, if there is a situation where somebody taps out for something, instead of just playing this and saying, well, you have to pay three or it's countered, you can cycle it and it becomes counter target spell and draw a card, which is very, very good, don't get me wrong. Uh, but that being said, it's very situational, not the kind of card I'd like. Uh, Dwarven Blast Miner is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a red. You can pay 2 and a red and tap it to destroy target non-basic land, and you can morph it for 1 red. Not a fan of this card at all. Uh, not too exciting in my opinion. Non-basic lands are not necessarily something you expect to come by very often, especially in draft. Uh, and so for that, it just it's really not all that good. So not exciting. Uh, Nameless One is a 3, uh, excuse me, is 3 and a blue for an XX. And its power and toughness are equal to the number of wizards in play, and you can morph it for two and a blue. Obviously, again, tribes were a thing in this set, wizards being one of them. I think if you already have the wizards, this is a good card. If you don't, it can be really, really bad. So I'm not a fan of this, unless I'm already in that deck. And then our rare here is Mobilization. Uh, it's an enchantment for two and a white. Attacking doesn't cause soldiers to, to tap. Uh, and you can pay two and a white to put a white a one one white soldier creature token into play. That's actually pretty good. Uh, I don't know if that's the best, but I feel like that's probably the card I would pick, only because it just kind of endlessly spits out creatures and enchantments, especially main board. You don't really expect your opponent to be able to to deal with that too well. 
Uh, and so for that reason, I actually do think I would go for Mobilization, which is a bit of a weird pick, but I do kind of like it. It's very possible that Dive Bomber or even Chain of Vapors would be a better pick. Uh, again, I don't know this set, so feel free to let me know in the comment section below, but I'm going to go with Mobilization. Hopefully you guys will let me know what you think. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys in the next Crack-A-Pack video.